welcome to the final edition of the special editions of the success series webinars brought to you by Louisiana State Civil Service. I am Christy Atwood. Hi, I'm Kimberly Broussard and we're so excited that you guys are joining us today. Oh, we are. We are. Um, we are really excited about this topic today, about lessons learned. It's kind of interesting, you know, when we started with this topic, uh, I, for me, I actually thought, okay, people will probably send in things like, um, you know, technology they've found or mm -hmm. little tips and tricks they learned to do, things like that. But people will surprise you because most of the lessons learned that we've started hearing about were about people. Mm. Uh, and I love it. It's about the people of Louisiana. It's about the people they work with. And it's even about themselves. A lot of the discoveries were things that we realized about ourselves. And honestly, I think that's a lot better than what I would have envisioned. So I'm really excited about us being able to share this with you today, our lessons learned. So Kim, what, what are we starting with here? What are we doing? Well, we're gonna have, <clears throat> we're gonna talk a little bit about some, some things that we've learned through this challenging experience. And I know that you and I have had a couple of conversations about you know, the lessons that we've learned throughout this process. And uh, we have some special guests that's going to join us today, and they're going to give us some of their lessons that they've learned along the way. So what we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about how everything has changed, but nothing is different. And so Doug Bordelon, one of our special guests from the Department of Environmental Quality, and Doug, I think you're going to talk and give us some lessons that you've learned along the way. Absolutely. Um, the biggest challenge for me going into this when we, you know, the governor issued the shelter in place orders and how we would be working as, as a, you know, the state employees, how would we, we would be working. I thought, gosh, working from home. I don't, I don't know what that means. I mean, I've, I've 18 years of state service, I've, I've never had to work from home or I've never, I've just always been, you know, I do HR work, we're the boots on the ground, we see people face to face, we're putting out fires, but we have to be in the office. So I didn't know what this meant. Um, I had a brief panic attack, uh, you know, jokingly, closed the door of my office, recentered myself, took about 20 minutes, breathed in, and I thought, well, you know something, someone told me once uh, about change. It may seem like everything's out of control, but tell yourself this, everything has changed, but nothing's different. What does that mean? Well, we're still answering our phones, but we're doing it at home. We'll we'll, we are still answering emails, but we're doing it at home. We're still auditing files, but we're doing it at home. We're still doing a lot of things, but we're doing it at home. So that took a lot of the, I don't know, fear out or the panic or the anxiety just realizing, look, you're doing the same thing, you're just doing it at home. We have to communicate differently. Uh, so w one thing is that I'm famous for is I do my little walkthroughs on my 15 minute break in the morning, my 15 minute break in the afternoon, just walk through the office, get people's pulse, say howdy do and whatnot. Hey, how's your work day going? How's the workload going? I can't really do that from home. So coworkers, supervisees, my supervisor, they know they're gonna get that phone call from me. Um, so the work doesn't go away. It doesn't change substantially. You just have to realize, look, it's a, it's a little bit different. It's the same game, just a different location. And once I made that shift, I realized, oh, this is, this is going to be fine. Uh, one thing, too, I've never telecommuted. And the first thing I thought was, gosh, I've got my, my Xbox at home. I don't know if I can be trusted. The Xbox... <laughs> <laughs> the Xbox was the farthest thing from my imagination. Um, everything I've ever heard about people who do telecommute, they talk about how productivity levels go up because you have fewer distractions. Um, the only time I really think about that Xbox, my work day is 8 to 4.30. Is at 4.31 when I'm powering everything down. I thought, okay, I can unplug now and I can go and, and re reacquaint myself with my Xbox. So that's what I've learned. Christy, could you advance this, please? Reframing is a shop term. Um, for those of you who know me, you already know this about me. For those of you who don't know me, okay, so I've been with the state about 18 years. I do mostly, uh, most of those 18 years has been HR work. So work for DEQ, I do human resources work, I'm an HR manager. But what 
What you may not know about me is I'm a licensed professional counselor. I've been licensed since January of 2005. When I do counsel, it's usually career counseling, but I do have a firm footing in mental health counseling. So way back in the day when I was studying counseling at LSU, one of the things we talked about was cognitive behavioral therapy. Reframing is a cognitive technique in cognitive therapy. And the idea is if you change the way you think, you change the way you behave. Okay, and if you look at any event, and I'm talking outside of trauma, I'm talking outside of crisis, I'm talking outside of emergency, but if you look at any event, any daily routine exchange, those things are pretty neutral. What can cause us anxiety, what can cause fear, what can cause us to be happy about stuff, it's the message we send ourselves about what just happened to us. So if we're saying, ooh, look out, look out, look out, someone just said you need to reframe it. It's like the picture behind me. It's a, it's a decent looking picture, but if I put a $5 million frame around it, that's gonna be a much different picture. And it's the same thing. It is the same thing with any type of exchange. It is the same thing with any type of routine, anything. So how can we reframe what we've been doing for the past six weeks? Oh, well, I'm working from home. I don't know what's gonna happen. Look at it this way, reframe that thought. Yeah, you're working from home, but now you have the opportunity to do some things that you wouldn't do otherwise. You have maybe more quiet time so you can focus on those duties that you've been putting on the back burner. So now is the time. How can I reframe this? And it's along those lines of thinking of it as the glass is either half empty or half full. What are you going to tell yourself? If it needs to be full, tell yourself it's half full. All right, so move us forward, please. Excellent stuff. Last but not least, I had attended, it was either a performance management workshop or a change management, work, change management workshop a few years back. And the fellow who was conducting the workshop apparently spent a lot of his time, one of his hobbies was uh, snow skiing. And he talked about how if you have a novice snow skier, if you've got those skis on and it's your first time going down that side of the mountain, he says, you can pick up speed like that. He says the initial response is, oh, I don't like this, let me pull back. He says, well, that's one of the quickest ways to destabilize yourself. He says, what you have to do if you want to maintain stability is you lean into it. He says, that may seem counterintuitive, but I guarantee you, if you pull back, you're going to start wiggling and down you go. You don't want to do that. He says, so lean into it. So we have some new things that Mother Nature has imposed on us. We have to work differently. We have to live differently. So one thing I've learned is lean into it. You know, there's no reason to resist it. There's not a whole lot we can do about it until this thing passes us by. But what we can do is just go with it. And once you realize, okay, here's this new boundary, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. But if I can operate within the boundary, I'm going to be fine. Wow. I love that. That is excellent, Doug. And yeah, it, it really, it's rethinking the way <laughs> we are facing what we're going through and I guess looking for the opportunities instead of the the challenges, you know, half half full, and and then I love the concept of leaning into it. That's a great one. Mm -hmm. It's just a fun way to fun way to manage a situation. Look, just go with it. Yeah, uh huh. Because it's things we don't have control over, so we can waste our time trying to control it and uh, and and feel lost because it's not working. Or we can lean into it and, and control what we have control over, and then the rest of it work with it and see what happens. Absolutely. Could be even better. I, I love it. This is excellent stuff. Okay. Thank you so much for that, Doug. And you will pop back in, right? <laughs> Come Absolutely. back and visit us some more. All right. Great. So those are some great ones to start us off with, being able to reframe what we were going through, being able to think and realize that, yeah, I, it, it all seems different, but it's the same stuff we're doing. Some excellent tips there. Who's going to help us next, Kimberly? Well, you, our next topic that we're going to talk about is lessons on being flexible. And so we have a special guest, Jenny Creighton, from our state civil service department, one of our own. And I believe that you have some lessons learned on being flexible, right? Yes. I really like what Doug said at the end uh, when he said, just go with it, um, because that's what I feel like these days, just go with it. Um, I really like things to be controlled, and this is completely not. So um, it's really great to have a, a routine, um, a checklist, a to-do list, 
Um, but then also, you know, for me, I have three kids at home, one of which is a six month old baby. My husband, who's a teacher, is also at home, working from home. So we're homeschooling our, our two kids, our older kids. We're working from home. And, you know, the house doesn't take care of itself either. So um, there's just a lot to go on every day. And so just to have those routines, but also be okay and be flexible when some things maybe don't go the way that you think they're, they're going to go or you plan for them to go. So, you know, pri I would say prioritize and get done as much as you can, the, the things that are a need to do right this moment or in the next, you know, few hours. Um, but then just be really okay when you're, you're kind of distracted a little bit. I mean, you got so many people at home and some of those people really need you for a lot. So just to, to be okay and um, to accept, like you said, that you can't control everything um, and to be as flexible as possible when you're um, having to do all of those things in, in one circumstance, because it's not really ideal to be doing all of these things at one time. Teleworking is one thing, but to add everything else on top of that is it's a lot. So definitely being flexible and allowing for those inconveniences. So maybe um, you don't have a kid, a, a screaming toddler or a baby that needs to be fed um, or a husband that's in the other room talking. But um, earlier this week, I had technology issues. This morning, we had technology issues. <laughs> yep with my laptop. And so um, I, I had to contact IT and I was really frustrated. Um, at, you know, again, I like when things are, you know, controllable and I can, you know, allow for what I know is going to happen. And um, so even if you don't have those situations, there's other situations that come up. And just to kind of like put yourself in that mindset every day that, hey, I need to be flexible. I need to allow for things to happen. Um, maybe that I'm not I, I'm not um, envisioning happening right at this moment, and then you know I think that you'll be okay when they when they do happen when that when that does um, when you experience something like that. And this is a big one for for me um, to give myself grace um, because sometimes you can't get everything done, and um, maybe you can't get it done the moment you want it done or the 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 way you want it done. Um, and that goes for everything, for work, for homeschooling the kids, for getting all of the laundry done, or, you know, um, I'm not exercising at all. So there's lots of things that, um, you know, it's okay. There's, there's a meme on, on Facebook that I've been seeing that, you know, give yourself a point for everything that you've done today. Took a shower, brushed your teeth, and those things are fun, and they're funny, and it's okay to kind of like laugh at yourself, and, but don't, um, don't really grade yourself by that kind of thing. Um, give yourself grace and then give other people grace too, because we're all um, kind of dealing with our own situations and you don't know, uh, you know, what someone else is going through at their own house. You e email somebody and you're expecting them, you know, to respond in a certain amount of time and they may not. Um, and so if I don't email you right away, I'm probably nursing the six month old. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, so just, you know, giving myself grace, giving other people grace and just learning to be okay that I can't control this whole situation and, and just being as flexible as possible. I like that, especially to give yourself grace because, you know, I'm so used to working, you know, in my cubicle with minimal distractions. And now, you know, my, my coworker wants to eat every 15 minutes. And, really? uh, you know, I too am, um, you know, doing school work as well. And so, you know, it was hard for me to juggle the two, getting my own work accomplished. And so mm -hmm. I had to learn to give myself grace that I'm trying my best. Yeah, and we're just all doing our best. Yep, and that's all that we can do. That's right. You're doing uh, great, Kim. <laughs> and, and you know There's what? Jenny. I love. Yes, yeah, she. Oh, Jenny's doing great with it. I love her newsletters. Um, I, but <laughs> the the thing is, you know, I, I love the thing you're talking about. Okay, yeah, we are harder on ourselves than anybody else. But yeah. it is a really good point that you're making about how we sometimes expect to get the same kind of response we would as if everybody else is still in the office. So mm -hmm. I send that email out, and then I'm like why aren't they answering aren't they sitting at their computer maybe not <laughs> you know that's we don't know exactly what's going on in every department right now and that's that's okay 
we got to lean into it. <laughs> we got to let it roll with the flow. And, and when it comes, work with it that way. And I like what Kalisha did a hashtag sorry, not sorry. Uh, so, yep. so, Kalisha knows. She knows. <laughs> so, this, this is a really good point. Uh, we could beat up on ourselves all the time because we're never going to have it exactly the way we want it to be. Or we could see what, what we've done that's really amazing. And I'm seeing a lot of that in the state. The things that people have been able to figure out how to do remotely has just blown me away. Uh, offices that I would have thought had totally would have to close down, you know, and not be able to do any work have figured out ways to do it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think all of y'all need to give yourselves pats on the back right now. <laughs> For everyone yes. else. Yes. Amen. I'm with you on that. Thank you very much. Excellent points, Jenny. Excellent. And and what I'd like to ask for some of our folks out there, have you found yourself becoming more flexible? What ways have you done that? What are some of the things that you see that used to make you go, Ugh, that you now are kind of allowing a little bit more flexibility in? That's one of those things that I think is going to be really great for us to carry back into the workplace. <clears throat> Definitely. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep that up there so people, you know, I'm going to in, invite people to keep writing into that one uh, as we move on. But, yeah, I want to I want to hear more about what people are doing throughout the, the state. Thank you, Jenny. You're great. Thank you, Mike. Awesome. Awesome. So, oh, man, some really great information here. And, mm -hmm. and so we've looked at we've looked at uh, some of the things about reframing. We've looked at some of the things about ourselves, the way we look at things. Uh, what, what's next? Well, it, it kind of coincides with what Jenny was talking about, about giving grace, um, it, well, giving grace to yourself. And also, it's important that during this time or, or any time that you, you take care of yourself. And we have Miss Leanna Toots from Department of Education. So, Leanna, tell me, what are some lessons that you've learned about taking care of yourself? Absolutely. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I think the biggest takeaway that I have in general before we dive in is just taking a moment for some self-care. Our health mentally is just as important as our health physically and separation requirements of six feet, but you also need to take away, uh, take care of your emotional self as well. So let's start with getting up and getting dressed. I can't tell you how much I feel better when I just change out of my jammies and into some regular clothes. There's something to be said for putting on those clothes and starting your day. It makes you prepared for whatever the day will throw at you. It puts you in a mindset to be productive. It is so easy to sit in the bed and work from home on your laptop, just plugging away and working and you're being productive, but you're like, feeling really down in, in, the, in the dumps and you're just feeling icky all around. But if you get up, get out of bed, put some clothes on. You don't have to shower today. Save that point for tomorrow. Put some clothes on and just start your day on the right foot being productive. The fact is when you get dressed, you're taking care of yourself. You're making yourself a priority, which is so important right now. The next thing that is so important that I find is stepping away from work. We are living in an environment where we are working in new locations. We're working on maybe flex schedules because we have to take care of the kids while your husband or your spouse or your partner is doing his conference call. So we're, we're being flexible and giving each other grace there. But it's so important to set as much as you can a routine and a schedule. If the, if the end of your day is at 430, I encourage you to turn off your email notifications on your cell phone so that you are not getting pinged with work emails. Don't go in and manually check those emails either until tomorrow morning. I promise you they will still be there tomorrow morning. Um, and one of the, the key things that I found success in is making sure that I schedule activities for as soon as I'm supposed to get off work. And what does that mean? It's not like a, um, a hair appointment or a nail appointment because we know that's not happening right now. But it's scheduling time with your family. It could be a walk with your partner around the neighborhood. It could be that you told your kids when mommy gets off at five o'clock, we're going to go outside and we're going to chalk in the driveway. It's just setting a commitment to completely turn off work and, and live a little. Get back to, to those daily activities that bring you a little bit of joy. During the workday, take a break. 
step away from your computer, go for a walk outside to check the mail, take the dogs for a little walk. It may be a little yoga stretch. It could be as simple as checking the news or watching 15 minutes of your favorite program, but just step away from work a little bit. It will help your mindset tremendously. That's great. Lastly, I think one of the ways to deal with any overwhelming emotion is to find a healthy way to express the feelings that you're going through. Um, they're valid. You need to acknowledge them. Um, but how can you do that in a way that's not putting the burden on someone else or you're feeling guilty for dumping everything on your spouse when their plate is full as well? How about journaling? Just get paper and a pen. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be a notebook. I keep mine in a notebook just because I've been a lifelong journaler. Um, but journaling can help you manage that anxiety. It can help you reduce stress. It can be a way to cope with any um, depression or emotions that you're feeling around that. We're going through a really crazy time right now that none of us have ever been through. And back to Jenny's point, give yourself a little bit of grace. But if you need to um, brain dump, for lack of a better term, or let out some emotions, do it in a constructive way that helps you to feel better. And for me, sometimes that's just scratching on a page and just like big words with big letters. And other times I have really thoughtful journal entries about goals or things I'm experiencing. Um, but just use your journal as you see fit. It can be as simple as, I put on pants today, that was a win. Um, right. Or a gratitude journal. Make it a practice to list three things that you're thankful for. We, we have a lot going on, but we also have some amazing things in our lives that we're thankful for. We're coming together as communities. We have jobs still. We have food on the table. Uh, just let it out. Write it out and acknowledge that those emotions are true and real and valid. Mm. Wow. I like I like that. And you know what's really cool about some of the lessons learned that Leanna brought up is those are, are things that you could still put into place when we go back um, to work. Oh, yep. I love that. I really love having an activity right when you get off work. So you have that that delineation between the work time and home time. And it's like reminding you, OK, leave that stuff behind. That That's done. Mm -hmm. It will be there tomorrow. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. With all of its friends, it will yeah. still be there tomorrow. <laughs> those, those emails seem to grow overnight. And, and I love journaling. I just think it's one of the best ways to get stuff out of your system. And, and I love the idea of gratitude journaling. So mm -hmm. excellent. These are wonderful ideas, Leanna. And, and so we also bring up here what self-care practices are helping you right now? What are the kinds of things that help you get through the days? I'm lo loving some of the comments that we're getting. Um, uh, <laughs> the one about, uh, the Kalisha says about, that's how I feel about taking a shower and brushing my teeth. It does something for me mentally. Yes. It, that's one of those things you do that starts your day. And it's like, okay, now I can start. Uh, journal and devotion, yes, uh-huh. Um, boy, these are some, some nice comments that we have here. Um, Still try, okay, Andy is still trying to, to get that balance between home and work life. And that is one of those areas that is continually a challenge because mm -hmm. our work is at home right now. And that's, that's hard to balance between. I, I love the idea of being able to do as much as we can to take those little breaks. Like Burgundy is saying, spending as much time outside as possible. Yes. Thank goodness we've got some good weather to be able to do that right now. Um, Rhonda meditates on her breaks. Oh. Ooh, heart. I love I that. I can do that. Oh, man, there there's some wonderful meditations on YouTube. If you ever want to take some time and just grab one of those and listen to it, usually they're about that 15 minutes. So it's really it's a nice way to be able to do that. Um, so there's so many things like that that we can do and and continue to give ourselves that care and of course the grace and so that we continually are are taking care of ourselves. And in doing that, we're taking care of ourselves, not only for us, but for everybody around us, because it makes a huge difference. Uh, Definitely. Let's see here. Um, what does Carolyn say? Get up, get dressed, go to work. It's another day of work. Only the location has changed. Mm -hmm. Great way to do that. And Sheldon's talking about, um, you know, eating lunch outside, getting away from the computer and the cell phone, those sorts of things. Those are really good ideas for that. So keep writing those in. We will keep sharing those as we go through the session today. All right, what's next for us, Kim? 
All right. So we talked a lot about self-care and it's important that we, we stay connected with others. So we have Jerry Mack from Teachers Retirement Systems of Louisiana. Jerry, what are some lessons that you learned about staying connected? Hi, thank you all so much for having me. This is such a great topic to talk about today. All of these subjects, I just want to ditto everything everyone has said, just give some virtual high fives. So when it comes to staying connected, as humans, we all crave it. Um, I personally am an extrovert. If you know me, you know I am. Christy, <coughs> uh, Christy also, also an extrovert. But everybody knows that the extroverts were kind of losing our minds a little bit. But guess what? The introverts need love too, y'all. Don't just assume that the introverts are okay because they're at home, they're in their little space, they get to read and have their quiet time because there's a very big difference between telling someone you cannot leave your house as opposed to I choose to not go out or I choose to not leave my house or being told you can't. So there's a very big difference. So regardless of who you are, what your people are, introverts, extroverts, we all have needs and we all have different needs. So really, it's so important to check on your people. Just take some time to reach out. So what ways have you stayed connected? I know a lot of us tend to stay connected with things usually like texting and Facebook, but I think we've used a lot more of these lately. So why don't you go ahead and type into the chat or questions box about which ways that you've stayed connected, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. FaceTime, I was telling the group, a um, couple of people, that I just randomly started FaceTiming people the Sunday before Easter. That's how soon I got stir crazy, y'all. The Sunday before Easter, I just started picking just random names, and some people answered, some didn't, just quick hellos. Zoom, as I'm sure we've all been using Zoom, either for work, for happy hours, for family, for connecting, texting, just a quick little text. Y'all would be surprised. Um, I know we're all in different places at different times. Like I'm going to say a little bit later, it's like we're all in the same storm, but we're in different boats. So just a quick little text message from some from you sending out to someone. You know, maybe you've got somebody that's worried about their family member that's in the hospital or in a nursing home, or maybe someone who's been ill recently and is recovering, or somebody who's really stressed out with trying to train their kids at home. All of these things, just take a minute to reach out. Phone, of course, phone calls still work. Apps, lots of apps out there, Google Duo, all kinds of things. I have just learned about Zoom and Google Duo for the first time in my life, but I do frequently use FaceTime. So what are some of the ways that you stay connected? Christy, what are some of the responses that you're seeing from our group? Oh, the list. Del Vecchio, Zoom, text, and calls. Michelle likes to send cards and actual letters. I, I think that, that is fantastic. Like that. And there's Shannon, handwritten letters. That means so much nowadays. Uh, let's see, Regina, FaceTime, Zoom, and texting. Oh, Danielle, this is awesome. A family scavenger hunt via group text at Easter. Oh, oh that is creative. That's, That's creative. creative. Sandra does the, the Skype instant messaging, and, and Rhonda texting, FaceTime, instant messaging, uh, phone calls, sending hello notes in the mail to friends and loved ones. Uh, let's see here. Kalisha, FaceTime, Zoom, texting, phone, Microsoft Teams. Uh, let's see. Regina uh, texting, Michelle. Oh, well, while she was sick, she got a lot of, of get, get better cards. So people were doing the, the old school, which is so nice. Google Hangouts is another one. FaceTime, text and FaceTime, Zoom, What's WhatsApp. That's another one that we hadn't had mentioned. Uh, let's see here. Duo, um, going, going through some of these. Group Me uh, and Zoom and Echo Show with family. Oh, Melissa, I haven't heard of that one before. Uh, and phone calls and texting. So, yeah, we got it all over the place, and people are being very creative about it. Jennifer, you had something you wanted to add in here? Oh, your microphone's not on right now. That little trick. There it is. That's the one. <laughs> We're good. But no, I'm feeling from a friend and I got a call um, and he said, I'm on my way to your house. I'm like, oh, we're in the COVID. What's going on? And he was picking one person a day and going to their house and staying in the car. And, you know, we just set up um, chairs in the front yard, yard and had a conversation from the car. And so that kind of started and we kept it going. And so we're trying to pick one person a week that we go and, and do a, a drive by. So that's been really fun. 
Come to my oh, neighborhood. I, Come to I me. absolutely <laughs> love that. And I love all the ways that we're being creative about staying in touch, some old school, some new school. And we're really learning a lot. Thanks so much for sharing that, Jennifer and the group. We've had some really great ideas. You know what else I've seen? Have you guys seen it in regards to staying connected? Have you guys seen like the virtual, not the virtual, but the drive-by birthday parties where people are riding in their cars and holding balloons and the posters and things of that nature for people's birthdays? There's so many ways to share and feel the love. Uh, I just had my birthday a couple days ago on Tuesday and a group of my classmates from St. Joseph's uh, a few years ago um, they all got on for a Zoom call, and I just thought one was calling me, and it was like a whole party line, and it was really very, very special, and just a really great way to feel the love. Really, That's really awesome. great. That is so sweet. I love that. You know, you know, Jerry, what I like, I like the fact that you said to try and and not everyone's communication is is the same, how they prefer to communicate, and uh, you know, my grandmother, um, she's eighty four, and. Um, you know, we were calling her during this time. We've been calling her every day, but towards around Easter, you know, it started to take a toll on her where she was missing seeing us because she doesn't have an iPhone and we all have iPhones. And so, um, you know, we would go to her house and sit on the porch and talk to her through the window, but we couldn't do that every day because, you know, we, you know, I've, we have a lot going on. So um, she's now using Google Duo which is so neat that my 84 year old grandma knows how to use Google Duo. And so she FaceTimes me and they, we actually did a family bingo game using. I love that. Duo. So it, it was, it was really neat. You know, it, 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 everyone is, is stepping out of their comfort zone. Oh, and, and stepping up. Their creativity is next level. This is really great things that we've come up with. Really yeah. great. So as we've talked about, there's different and new ways to connect. There's old school, new school, but it's important to find a way that connects for you and the way that connects for who you're trying to connect to. So like I said earlier, we're all in the same storm. We're just in different boats, which might I say are about six feet apart. So when it comes to we're all going to, we're all in this together, we are, and we're all going to get through it together, but we're all having different experiences. Um, you've got people who are still working, people who are working from home, people on the front lines, people who've lost their jobs. Everybody is at so many different levels, and it's so important that we keep that in mind. Even if you just drop a shoot text, even if you just shoot a quick text message to someone, hey, thinking about you, know y'all are going through a hard time, love and prayers. Just a quick little love or honestly, just a cute little cat video or something sometimes if it's a cat person. I mean, who doesn't love those little kitten videos, you know? <laughs> I love it. That's Another way that we can think about is what was talked about earlier was a walk, maybe going for a walk. I've done a few social distancing walks with friends. We've kept six feet away. Zoom with your friends, a social distancing picnic, like we were talking about earlier a moment ago, just showing up at someone's house. So it's so important to think about what is most comfortable for you. And in closing, I want to give everyone a challenge. Think of two people that you haven't talked to, and I'm not, I don't mean texting and being on Facebook, that you haven't actually spoken to in at least a year and reach out to them this weekend in some way, whether it's FaceTime, Zoom, maybe it's writing a letter. I don't know. Whatever works best for you and them. I recently reconnected with my high school pen pal That's from, you know, just like two or three years ago, of course. You can't see me, so I'll just go with that. Um, my high school pen pal from a few years ago. Okay, it's over 20 and met up with her on the phone, and we had such a grand time catching up. So I challenge you to think of two people you haven't reached out to in over a year and reach out to them this weekend because as humans, we crave it, and it's so important that we stay connected now more than ever. Thank you so much for having me and for being a part of this, guys. I appreciate it. Oh, Jerry, I just love it. I love it. And I'm going to take you up on that challenge. Okay, now, everybody, we're going to be checking to see if you'll do this. Find somebody you haven't talked to in over a year and connect with two people this weekend and see what a difference it makes in their lives. Because that those connections, while we can't touch by hand, we can't, you know, be the, we can certainly connect in other ways like that. I love, uh, we just had a, a comment from Carolyn. They did a drive-by wave and wish happy birthday procession for a church member. What oh. they did, they said other traffic 
actually pulled over and let the procession go by. Neighbors stepped outside and said they finally had something to smile about. So you can still maintain being quarantined in your private vehicle, but share to the joy to others. Mm, so I love that. These are wonderful examples. And please, I, I, I really, I, I dare y'all, I dare you to go ahead and try that and see if you can't do a, a challenge this weekend where you talk to two people you hadn't talked to in a year. That, that can start some really great conversations going. Excellent stuff from Jerry there. We got more still, don't we, Kim? Definitely. I believe Jennifer Schulte, one of our own from State Civil Service Talent Development. So Jennifer, I know that you've learned some strategies on how to become more anchored during this time. What are some yeah. strategies? Sorry to cut you off, Kimberly, but yes, I have. Um, you know, I think we're all hitting on some of the same uh, topics. And I think, you know, it's become more comfortable to be vulnerable and, you know, share these things. So I'm really excited to talk about, um, I had this aha moment about three or four weeks ago. And, you know, I was just feeling anxious and irritable and, you know, thinking about the fact that I'm not at work, everything has changed, work, life, responsibilities, going to the store, travel. Um, but I still felt the same way that I did before COVID. And I had a realization that, yeah, everything's changed except for me. Um, and that really was an aha moment. It doesn't seem like a big thing, but it was. And I thought back to what Julie Miller had said on one of the first webinars, and it was, um, you really can't go outside, be around each other, but you can go inside. And I really took that to heart and really wanted to focus in on becoming more anchored. Um, and it just so happened I was reading a book at the time and a passage just stuck with me. It said, sometimes it's easy to convince or fool ourselves and others that we're masterful in our life because we look so busy and important when the truth is we're actually running around trying to manage how out of control we really or really feel. And um, I think I fit into that. I think a lot of people fit into just this busy, crazy, hectic life. You know, I, I, my sister, I don't know how she does it with two kids at home. Everybody else that has kids at home, it's, it's truly like um, a life whack-a-mole. You know, we're just pushing everything down. And so um, I decided at that point that instead of managing situation by situation and trying to control everything, on the outside, I really wanted to focus on becoming more anchored and just get into that, that whack-a-mole. And so, you know, I've got, I focus on three different strategies. Um, the first one is just trying to stay centered. Uh, Doug hit on this. I think Leanna did too about your mental health and controlling those thoughts. You know, um, I've been repeating over and over again. Yes, I do have the ability to control my emotions, my feelings, and my reactions to it. I think I let a lot of things, you know, affect me that really shouldn't in the end. And um, I've been rabid about controlling it. Not just reframing, but being cognizant of when I, when I am triggered and trying to be more proactive in, in framing those um, situations. So the next one. Oh, uh, Jennifer, I think your computer is shaking a little bit. I'm hearing a tapping sound. <laughs> it could be me. You know, like <laughs> hands okay. and trying to hide my hands. So, um, <laughs> yes. but yeah, okay. the next one um, I'm stealing from a mentor of mine. His name is Darren K. Roberts, as it's, it's on the screen. Um, but he's actually the founder of the Sports Leadership Institute at UT. And he's just the most motivating person I've ever met. And uh, his, his tagline, and he says it all the time, is stay in the deep end, yet control the controllables. And I think recognizing that so much of this is out of our control, what are the things that we can control? And break it down. You know, Christy, you mentioned earlier as well in one of the webinars that you were feeling guilty that you weren't taking all of these free classes and going back to school and, you know, reading these books. And... I, I was feeling the same way, and I had to step back, give myself grace, as um, Jenny stated earlier, and focus on what are those micro wins? What are those quick wins that are going to make me feel more successful throughout the day? 
And, you know, Darren's example, they're simple, they're small, they're micro. And what I love about it, he posts them every single day on Facebook. And, you know, it's an accountability piece, but he's also so transparent and vulnerable. He doesn't meet all of his goals every day, as you can see right there. But it's, what are we going to do better next time? You know, we're not perfect, but we can make those strides in, in, in being more centered through our goals. I love that. I love the idea, the whole idea of micro goals. Just so I have something I can check off my list. I want that so badly each day. It does. It feels so good. <laughs> definitely. It, it definitely does. I love the micro wins. I love that. One of my micro wins this morning was I combed my hair. So kudos. And we are really nice happy hair. about that, Kim. We're very happy. <laughs> um, the other thing that I liked about his, um, and he posted this a little bit later, but he focused one goal on work, one on family, and one on his own health. So, you know, he was in all three of those areas and, you know, brought it all together. So uh, I'm stealing and I'm trying to do the same thing. Um, the last thing that I focused on is just motivation. You know, we've talked about turning off the computer and taking care of ourselves, but how do you remain motivated? You know, as a supervisor, how do I keep my team motivated? And I read a great article from the uh, Harvard Business Review, and it came down to three things, play, purpose, and potential. Um, one of the things that I miss the most about being in the office is the play aspect problem solving, throwing ideas around with my team. You know, I really, really did rely on others to get that feedback. And one of the ways that I'm being more anchored is doing it by myself, you know? And so the picture on the screen is a picture of my desk. It's a whiteboard desk, which I just absolutely love. I may actually have to bring this back to the office with me um, because that is my play area. You know, I can be creative, I can write things out and work through that problem solving um, on my own and then still, you know, share with others, um, obviously. Um, I've also had to reevaluate my purpose. You know, so much of our identity is wrapped up in our daily commute, going to work, being that person, and we're not that person. Right now. And I think just focusing on foundation. Um, I think Doug said earlier that it's a great time to go back and look at some of those projects that have been pushed to the back. And so my purpose right now is to back up and look at what are the foundational things that I can do for our department that are going to help us run when we do get back to the office. So, you know, just readjusting your purpose and not, not expecting it to be the same as it was right before um, COVID. And then finally, it's potential. How do you keep that fire stoked? That, yeah, how do you keep your fire stoked? Um, and I've really tried to focus on where are my passions? How can I get connected, as Leanna said? Um, I've joined some great webinars recently after I got over the whole overwhelmed feeling of not doing anything. Um, and so trying to keep my passions alive and my potential growing and at the same time, sharing that with other people, you know, with my employees, with my team. So, you know, just trying to become more anchored in your thoughts, um, your goals, and then that motivation. Those have really been my three areas that have um, brought me through. So. What a three-part approach that's perfect. Mm -hmm. I just love that because dealing with yourself, dealing with what you're trying to do, and then the how you're doing it, how you're motivated to do it. Uh, a great, it's it's almost like the same way that you're talking about his list was about himself, his family. All, it's the same thing there, but it's in a bigger view. And right. I and I like that. I like, and that's something else that you can take with you when you go back to the office is those micro goals. That's it. I, I really, I really love that. I'm, I, I actually wrote it down. Great point, Kim. That's, hey. This is good stuff. Hey, you're helping us. You're helping people across the state right now, too. <laughs> that is excellent. That's excellent. And and yeah, let's please keep those things in mind and, and give ourselves credit for what we're doing, but also find the potential in everything that we're going through right now. That's good mm -hmm. stuff. Jessica. Thanks. One of the things I think uh, that has been a big one for us is this at this time we have learned to appreciate 
people that we might have taken for granted in the past. Mm -hmm. We've got so many people that, you know, yeah, we're working. We're working at home and we're working hard, but there are people who are still having to work out there, you know, where there's other dangers involved and other things they have to think about. And I think it's wonderful that this time is making a lot of us a lot more appreciative of those individuals. Don't you find that, Kim? Definitely appreciative and kind. I've seen people who have been leaving out little snacks for the delivery drivers, like UPS, the uh, the um, post office, uh, the, the postman, and things of that nature. So I, I find that it's been we've been it's bringing out a, a kinder side out of us and a more creative side. Look how creative we have been, you know, during this time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I. I, uh, I'm i just amazed when I stop and think about some of the people who are out there working so hard, and it makes me want to connect with them. It makes me want to stop with that person at the drive through window, and instead of just grabbing my change in my bag going, thank you for doing this, because my cooking stinks, and nobody wants that, so thank you for helping me through this. You know, I, I realize, and, and even those people that we talk to on the phone, realizing that they're having to do their same job, but at home with those crazy animals and those kids or whoever else it happens to be in the house, or maybe it's equipment that's really old because they don't normally work at home. So they're having to deal with a lot of things like that and being able to stop and say, hey, I appreciate the fact that you're here to do this for me. Mm -hmm. Those are the kinds of things that I'm seeing that I think are going to make a difference in us, not just now, but when we get back in the workplace too. Jennifer, you have things like that? Yeah, you know, um, my partner, Annie, she's also been in um, an essential uh, position and, you know, she works in a, a chemical setting and just to see how quickly people have responded um, switching over from making medicine to PPEs, you know, it's just been amazing how flexible we really are, you know, mm -hmm. how quickly we can make change happen just by coming together. I think Leanna said, you know, we're in the, the same boat and it's just been amazing to experience that. And, you know, never again am I going to take for granted, um, you know, my garbage disappearing, you know. I yes. mean, wow. So, you know, just taking the time to say thank you, we appreciate you is, is paramount in my life. Yes. And, and, and just think about you guys that are out there that work for the state of Louisiana that are still servicing the residents of Louisiana and, you know, working, whether you're in LDH, whether you're in, in, in any field, you know, go, getting up, going to work and still servicing. Thank you guys for doing that. You know, it's, it makes me so proud to work for the state of Louisiana because we are phenomenal. <laughs> there, are, there are departments right now that are doing their jobs that I could not even imagine how they were able to restructure to make that work happen. Uh, we must have some of the most innovative people in the world working in Louisiana because, I, I mean, they, they haven't missed a step. They're still getting the work done. And, God, that makes me so proud, you know? Uh, I, I just think it's really amazing. I think uh, we have some fantastic people that we work with. And that's when it, why it comes back to these lessons we learned that they're about people, it seems like. You know, we start realizing how wonderful the people that we work with more are. Um, let's see here. Oh, we all rock. We are a team, said Don. I love that. Right. Um, let's see here. Okay. I do want to look at some of these notes that we've had uh, from some of these folks because they've had some great, great points. Um, let's see. Sheldon was well, talking about how Doug is spot on. Uh, the dy dynamics have changed, uh, and resiliency and adaptability are challenged. Uh, he talks about, you know, he was a former educator, and he had to get back to some of those soft skills that he learned from the classroom so mm -hmm. that he could be successful in this workplace. So, in other words, taking skills that we didn't ever think we'd be using in these jobs, and now we're having to be able to adapt them and use them in these, these positions we're in. I think that's a, a wonderful realization to make. Um, I love that Annie talks about, you know, not rushing people to respond on emails now. She's, she's, we found a new tolerance, a new patience in the Ooh. things that we're doing. And I think that's wonderful. Um, let's see here. Some of the other things that people have talked about. Uh, I love this. Danielle was talking about gardening. 
it's great being at home and being able to, to pull weeds on my breaks. Now tell me that's not an inv innovative way to do things. <laughs> And uh, it takes her pets on, on walks during breaks. I love that. Uh, some of our folks from Pro Trainer were saying it was so great to hear from our Pro Trainer people. Jerry and Doug are both graduates of the Pro Trainer Certificate Program. So I just want to mention that that's why they're so good. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, introverts can have the fear of missing out too. And that is an excellent point that uh, we, we have to keep in mind that it's it's not just the extroverts who are uh, who are suffering from being away from everyone. It's it's everybody has their different ways of, of dealing with it. It's sort of like realizing that we all have difficulties that we're going through. They're just different. That's Nobody right. has it better or easier because of the situation they're in. It's just they're different. And so we got to give everybody a little bit of leeway and we got to give ourselves a lot of leeway too. Um, goodness hey, gracious. I just wanted to add, Christy, I love um, that you guys are talking about really appreciating people and a lot of people have said that a lot of the different panelists. Um, one of the ways for sure I think is really important is to recognize people right now uh, when we're kind of all apart, um, whether it be a, a, like an agency recognizing a, a group of people on social media or, um, or a, a supervisor recognizing one person on their team. I think recognition and is really important right now for people, um, even though we're apart. So just wanted to throw out, out that opportunity for supervisors and agencies and um, public information people um, to share on social media. Um, that it's just really important, like you said, to, to kind of do it on a larger scale too. That is a great idea. And Jenny would know about these things because she does our social media for, <laughs> for civil service. And, oh, she does a great job of it. So if you want some good ideas, look at what she does. because uh, There's some excellent things on there where she's able to recognize people and, and things that are going on. And, Jenny, you do a great job, by the way, since we're appreciating Definitely. people. Definitely. Thanks so much. We look forward to those newsletters. Yes. Excellent stuff. So, so think about out of the box ways of being able to recognize some of the wonderful people that we work with and, and some of the different things that are happening that are amazing you. We need to be amazed at all times now at the things that people are being able to accomplish in a time when a lot of us, we, we could just sit back and say, oh, I can't do anything. You know, I, this is too hard. Uh, and instead, this, this state's showing what they're made of. And I'm really proud. I'm proud of our, our employees. Kim? I'm sorry, you, you froze a little bit speaking of Did technical I freeze? difficulties. Oh, yes. there you go. And see, our flexibility has taught us a lot too, because when things like that happen, we don't have to go, oops, I get, don't, don't say anything. No, I froze and it's okay. <laughs> but but we're, we're learning to be more adaptable. And I think that's a huge skill that we all need to have. So excellent one there. Kim, did you have anything you wanted to add on the closing thoughts? No, but it, it going through this uh, this webinar made me realize that I've learned more lessons than I thought I did. Yeah, I I know what you mean because some of them were things that we were taking for granted, hmm. and those are really good lessons to to relearn. Jennifer. Yeah, I just wanted to to say I I'm so impressed that finally we're taking mental health self-care so seriously. I think this event has shown us how important it is. Um, and while society doesn't support that a lot of times, I think we're figuring this out on a personal level. And, you know, I really hope that it continues once real life starts again. And that's kind of what I'm focusing on now is how do we carry over this momentum that we have into um, life when it gets back to its normal pace. And that's when, yeah, that's when we maybe should take some of that journaling that Leanna was doing and be able to use that to write down the lessons we're learning so that we can take them back into the workplace. Yeah, great idea. Can I come in on something? Come on in, Doug. What you got? <laughs> just on the heels of what Jennifer was saying about mental health and self-care, one thing I just want to encourage everyone, it if you're feeling down in the dumps or if you're just feeling like you're in a rut or you just something is missing and you don't know what it is don't overlook the impact the positive impact of something very very small can have on you for example uh jerry was talking earlier about introverts and extroverts and, and whatnot i'm probably one of the more extroverted introverts you'll meet but i am very much introverted 
one thing I miss sorely is hearing the chatter in the background from my coworkers. Um, I just, it's one of those things. And I thought being in the office once a week or twice a week and hearing the chatter, what little chatter is going on, it makes all the difference in the world. Other small things you can do for yourself, getting out, if, if you've been working in spreadsheets nonstop and you haven't seen the light of day, take your 15 minute break, go outside, enjoy the sunshine. Or better yet, hey, if you're telecommuting, I don't know of any rule or any policy that says, look, you can't sort through your files or work on your spreadsheets on your picnic table in the backyard in the sunshine. Don't mm -hmm. ever underestimate the, the, the tremendous effect something that small and inexpensive and easy to do will have on your mental health or on your sense of well-being. It's just so easy to do. And I think too often we look for the expensive fix or the complex. It doesn't have to be. It's a something as simple as if you never take the 15 minute break, take the 15 minute break, go get you some Kool-Aid walk in the sunshine, spend some time with your family, take your dog for a walk, what have you, but give yourself that break. That is great advice, Doug. I think after this is over, I'm gonna go outside and pet a stray cat. Thank you for that. <laughs> I love that one a lot. Excellent advice. Great thoughts from all of y'all. We really appreciate y'all being a part of the program today. Uh, I do want to remind folks that if you're looking for the handouts, you just go to the civil service page and go to talent development, CPTP page, and it brings up that tab and you see success series. And when you click on that, it brings up the handouts from this and from all of the, the webinars that we've had so far. And there's some really good information if you go back through there. Um, also, you'll be able to see this webinar soon because our technological people within the and our learning part oh, they're just amazing those folks can make things happen so fast so we've got them already working ready to go to to try to put this webinar into a format so you'll be able to see it on youtube within the next couple of days uh they're working and immediately trying to get them into leo so there's going to be a whole lot of different ways for you to be able to see this webinar if you missed any part of it or if there's something else that you wanted to see again please check them out there. So we want to thank you so much for being a part of this program. Kim, thank you too. You too, Christy. I'm, I'm just so excited that everyone, it feels like we, we've all gone through this, helping each other through the process, all of us. And it's, it's nice for us to all come together and, and be kind to each other. I love that. Yes. And so this is the final one of our special editions. So we will go back to our regular monthly schedule with the success series webinar. So the next one will be the third Thursday of May. We'll have another webinar then. Uh, until then, we welcome your thoughts, your suggestions or ideas, questions, anything like that, because we want to still be here as a resource to you. So please know that even if we're not doing these every week, we're here, we're ready and we're flexible, so we can work with you however we need to. So we thank you so much for being a part of this. We thank you for what you're doing to keep the state of Louisiana moving in the right direction during an impossible time, and we thank you for being a part of the webinars. And don't forget, don't forget, uh, keep on learning, okay? Thanks. Every day for every citizen.